so we continue now the uh, topic of uh, JavaScript arrays. Uh, you remember that on Monday we already touched uh, uh, some of it. Uh, basically, the syntax for creating arrays, which is uh, very simple, just uh, you know, list the elements in square brackets. And uh, uh, we have the length attribute uh, that is automatically computed and available. Just one note. It's length and not length with the um, with the wrong brackets because it's a property and not a, um, a function. Okay, so just uh, from the syntax point of view, it is one uh, one of the few um, properties that don't need uh, to be called uh, as a function. Um, we saw that there are methods for adding elements uh, at the beginning or at the or removing elements at the beginning or at the end of the array. And uh, um, we also noticed that uh, the variable that we use to represent an array is uh, uh, only a reference to the actual uh, array. So whenever we do some uh, copy operation, we are only copying the reference and not copying the data. This is normal. This is everywhere in JavaScript. The variables are always just references uh, to, to the values that we want. No? Uh, graphically, we would represent it uh, as having two different variables uh, pointing uh, to the same objects. Um, think uh, uh, as uh, Java references or think of as uh, Python references or as uh, C uh, pointers or C++ references. The concept is, is the same. Okay, uh, The copy only copies the reference. And if you want to really make a copy of the data structure, uh, you need a more you know, explicit operation. In the case of arrays, uh, uh there is this uh, um, function from from the object array uh, that is, is is useful to create an array from another array uh, but we'll see uh, um, also an alternative which is uh, much simpler from the syntax point of view um it iterating over arrays uh, it will be done uh, with of course uh, the for loop or there are also functional uh, alternatives that we are going to study next week uh, that give you a different way of iterating over a collection over uh, an array. Okay, uh, this is a short list of uh, of the main methods that we are going to use uh, um, with uh, with the arrays. Um, strange enough, uh, if you for concatenating two strings, uh, you can use the plus operator, but uh, for concatenating two arrays, uh, you must use explicitly the concatenate method. There is a join uh, function in which you can have a uh, uh, an array dot uh, uh, join uh, and you have a delimiter hmm? for example uh, uh, semicolon for example it will create a string that will collapse all the elements of the array separated by the, the, the delimiter that you specify so when you want to create a list uh, with the element of the array in form of a string with some separator this is uh, uh, quite useful um, there are these two methods uh, slice and splice uh, they have strange name, names. Uh, a slice is easy because it just extracts a, a section uh, of an array and returns a new array. So if you have a, an array with many elements, uh, you just extract one slice, okay, of the of the array from a starting index to a final index, uh, and you get a copy of, of these elements. Uh, it's a real copy; it's not just just a reference. Hmm? So you extract this uh, and make a copy. Of, of the same uh, portion of the array. So if you want to extract a subset of the array. Uh, splice is a complex operation when you uh, actually remove some elements and add some new ones. So if you have the list of many elements, you can decide to remove maybe three elements here and replace them with uh, an array or, or with two new elements, Y and Y. So you can just delete, destroy one part of the array and uh, and stop there. So you're just deleting and stop. Or you can delete and add in the middle. Add new elements in place of those uh, that was were previously there. OK? Um, the nice part is that the number of elements that you add need not be the same of the number of elements that you're removing. So in this way, in this game, you can uh, you know, lengthen or you can shorten the the, um, the array because you can add more or less uh, elements than you um, than you derive. Um, 
Marco is asking if the element of an array is a string, is it possible to use the plus to make a concatenation of the element, not of the array itself, of course. Okay, um, let me just uh, pull an example very quickly. Uh, let's use this, uh, this, this website uh, that I use in sometimes uh, JS console that uh, gives us a, a, a JavaScript console. So if you are if you have a, 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 an array with strings, uh, one, two, three, okay, um, and then and another array B is uh, uno, dos, tres, just to avoid Italian. Okay, you cannot make a plus b. Hmm? Uh, a plus b is a is a bad operation because what it would do it would be to convert string a uh, um, the array a into a string like this, and then convert b into a string, and apply the plus operator to the two strings. Okay, so it's not uh, uh, what, what you get is not uh, probably uh, what you expect. You would expect probably uh, uh, a, a single array like you get with uh, concatenating uh, the two arrays. So you get a new array with the with the concatenation of the elements. Uh, so always be be careful, uh, especially when you're using plus with some operand that don't support it. Usually, what you get is uh, um, the conversion to string and then the operation to strings. Huh? So it's uh, usually a bit dangerous. Huh? Uh, of course, you can always use uh, concatenate the string. So a1 plus b2. Of course, uh, it's uh, concatenated, but you are, we are working with the single elements of the array, not with the array itself. Right? Um, Okay, for example, if you want to play with the the um, with the splice, uh, just to have a look uh, at how it works, uh, let's create uh, the the array of C uh, with with these six elements, and we want to replace these uh, uh, sorry these two central elements, uh, the um, three and the uno, with uh, uh, maybe just one element, an asterisk, for example, as a separator. Okay. So, uh, for example, we can have uh, um, C dot splice. We want I want to remove two elements and insert a new one. And so, what is splice telling us? Give me the index of the elements and the number of elements to remove. So the index will be zero, one, two, and they want to remove two elements and add an asterisk in their place. And what I get. Uh, uh, It's the uh, so I get the C array. So what I get is uh, the the splice uh, function will return the element that I removed. So if I need them, I can use them, and the array itself has been modified. So we should always be careful um, with the array methods because some of them uh, return a new array but leave uh, the original array uh, untouched, like the concatenate doesn't modify A. It returns a new array that we can save somewhere. And uh, instead, uh, um, splice will modify the array in place, like we said here, by modifying the original array, and will also uh, give a return value. Um, yes, I, you're right, and I forgot to put the let in front of the console because this console is starting in not in strict mode, so uh, I can use that. Also in the browser, in the um, console browser, when you are playing with that, uh, uh, it happens that you can forget that. But just imagine that in front of each of these, uh, there should be a let statement. Uh, so sorry for forgetting. Uh, I will load it so that uh, I will start scratch from scratch. Um, and again, you see that some of the uh, methods are called uh, like uh, are in place operations, like the reversing or the sorting, um, and so they modify the uh, the array. Otherwise, they just return a new array um, with the with the elements that you are selecting. 
so from searching uh, inside an array, an element inside an array, you can use index drop. So you don't need to have the loops uh, for finding the elements. Uh, index uh, starting from the beginning or for starting from the end. And uh, um, if you want to know whether a value is inside an array, but you don't care about the position, you can just use the includes uh, uh, method that uh, uh, just tells you whether the value is there or not. Um, careful with the notion of equality uh, because they are, it's trying to check whether each element is equal or not. Uh, and uh, we see that uh, uh, if there are strings or, or number, the concept of equality is easy. But if they are a complex data structures, in many cases, it doesn't work uh, as you want because they are checking identity and they are not uh, comparing really the elements. Hmm? So but it's just a basic function that uh, have different names from other languages, but they do the basic operations. Plus, there are some uh, um, nice syntax uh, tricks uh, in um, in JavaScript. Uh, there's one statement that could could uh, look like you know, a corner case, but we are going to use it very much. Uh, this so-called destruction assignment. Also, Python has this syntax. Uh, what is a destruction assignment? It's an assignment, an equal sign, normally, uh, that you can use uh, inside the code or even during the declaration, during the left declaration, where on the left-hand side, you have the specification and an array-like syntax. Um, what you are doing is that uh, you are uh, you're providing variable names here and there that are uh, placeholders inside the different positions of the array. And so you can, uh, in one statement, uh, say that you are constructing an array on the right hand side and you are destructuring, destroying the array into the two variables on the left hand side. So it's a way of doing two assignments in parallel. If you have one array uh, and you want to extract the, the elements, if you want, uh, for example, uh, I have uh, let uh, numbers uh, is uh, 1, 7, 18, 55, whatever. Uh, it's just an array. Uh, I want to extract the first and the last one, for example, okay. Uh, let uh, the extremes, uh, the first and the last ones. Uh, no, sorry, I could. I, I want to extract the first one. That could be, of course, number numbers of zero. Okay, this is easy. Okay, uh, but I want to extract the first and the last at the same time. So I could extract the first. I call me first two because first is already defined in the line above and uh, last uh, final last and they pick uh, the numbers an array that contains numbers of zero and uh, numbers of uh, the length uh, minus one numbers length minus one so I'm creating an array that contains all the values that they want, and then I assign array to array, and the left-hand array is decomposed into the individual variables. Uh, probably a global property undefined. What did I uh, redeclaration non configurable Sorry, that's, uh, you should always try them first. Okay, this is right. Okay, yeah. Uh, Maybe. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Probably this uh, JS console is using an old version of, uh, of JavaScript uh, because it's only available in the, in the more modern ones. So I we will try that in um, not in, um, in Visual Studio Code. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yes, it's uh, it's a version of JavaScript that is supported here, which is too old. So probably I found this. I I, I found it was uh, useful and quick and easy to use, but actually. 
uh, it's better not use it because it doesn't support uh, the modern syntax of JavaScript. Uh, Luca is asking, can I assign only one value to the variable on the left or can I assign them to the um, only one value to the variable on the left? Uh, the goal of this is that having an array and instead of, of assigning the whole array, you assign, you assign the single element. So you are extracting them. Uh, it's, it's, will be, it'll be, it will be also more useful when you are, we will dis, be destructuring uh, objects. And where you have an object with many properties and you want to split the, the different properties into many separate variables. Okay. Or if you have a, you know, a Cartesian uh, coordinates and you want to split them into X and Y, sorry, because you want to make uh, different operations with X uh, and different operations with Y. So having them as a first and second component would be uh, boring. And so you, uh, it's a quick way of separating them. Or it's a quick way of swapping two variables or two positions of, uh, of an array. OK, so if you want to swap the first and second element, you don't need a temporary variable to do the trick because you could just say that uh, uh, if I want to swap the first and second element of an array, You can just uh, build it like that. Mm. And so you are uh, creating a temporary array with the two elements and you are assigning them to new variables. And these variables actually are the reference to a, a location into an array. So you are overwriting and uh, uh, you are assigning zero to one and one to zero without the need of a temporary variable. Mm. It looks like uh, there are small tricks that makes a, a code faster to write. And there's also some uh, strange fancy uh, um, operator. And uh, probably it's also along the lines of what Luca was thinking is the spread operator, which is used in two different contexts. Um, basically it takes um, um, uh, the structuring assignments uh, and groups the elements. So you see that we have uh, for an array with four elements and you are destructuring them in only in two one is a single variable and the other is the rest so the rest will be put you see the, the rest operator it's called spread or rest because it depends on how it's working uh, it picks everything else and puts it into a list so if you have a long list you want to separate the first element from the others you can use this of course, you can also use the splice function to extract, and but, but uh, uh, the syntax here is uh, is, uh, is quicker and also speaks uh, um, better. This uh, uh, spread operator can be used on the left hand side of an equal sign, and in this case, it will just take every uh, remaining data from the right hand side expression, or you can also use it in any expression, like here. Uh, what it does here is will, is the reverse. It will, it will be to expand an array into its components. You see these parts here is an, is an array that contains two elements, zero and one. Uh, if we are spreading an array inside this list, you see we are constructing a new array. Uh, it's uh, the same as we had put the first one and the second one. So it's a way of having uh, different elements uh, separated in, in, in a list, extracting them from an existing array. And, and so you see that the, uh, the final list is not a nested array, an array with another array inside, which we, we would, would be possible, but it's not what you are trying to do. You are just expanding them. So there are uh, quick ways uh, of converting lists uh, of separate variables or separate elements uh, into arrays mm, that uh, uh, collect all of them or vice versa. Mm. Uh, there is a strange syntax, uh, but uh, we will get used to them. We can also concatenate two arrays. Yes, of course, for concatenated two arrays, we could say, okay, I want to concatenate array A and array B. Or we can also also make a copy of an array simply by creating a new array with the spread of the initial one. And that's why I never remember the array.from uh, function because it's much quicker to write it in this way. 
uh, it's a shallow copy as it copies only the first level, the references to the elements. Okay, if the the elements of A are by themselves arrays or objects, they will be kept uh, um, shared. It's not a recursive. Uh, okay, so that was uh, we were saying. Okay, it's, uh, this uh, is usually is the form of cop or copying a value uh, that is mostly remembered and mostly used. Hmm? Uh, arrays uh, are one of the three ingredients of JavaScript that when you combine them, uh, they give you the power of the language. Okay, you have arrays, uh, we have functions, uh, and we have objects, uh, and the three of them uh, create actually what uh, the, the, the real feeling and flavor of, of JavaScript. Uh, today we'll try to put together all these elements, uh, we try not to get too confused, I hope. Um, each of them may seem strange may seem normal okay but when you really put them together they start interacting in interesting way let's call them interesting and and they give you the the idioms that usually we use in javascript which are very peculiar okay so that why the programming javascript is not the normal procedural way is not the normal object oriented way we will see that usually it's a lot of functional and asynchronous code thanks to the properties of these uh, three key elements. <clears throat> Our, about strings, there's not much to say. Uh, strings are just a, a primitive type. It's an immutable sequence uh, of, of characters. So strings are always Unicode, so you don't have to care about uh, uh, the encoding and so on. And uh, you can index the elements uh, with the, of course, the, in the individual characters with their index is starting from zero. Nothing strange. The only important thing is that you cannot mo modify a string in any way. Okay, if you want to have some modification of a string, the only way is to create a new one uh, with some characters changed, uh, added or destroyed, and so on. Um, you can quote strings with single double quotes, but we know already that uh, the basic operation is just extracting a character, extract, uh, concatenating or extracting the length of a string, uh, something very easy. And the, uh, just a, um, uh, a list of the main methods, uh, uh, but there's nothing, you know, strings are very easy, are very easy, easy, easy. Uh, they are very easy data structure, okay? You can extract uh, one single character, but it is the same uh, as you are uh, indexing the, the string itself. You can find a character uh, you can check whether a string starts or ends or includes a given other substring. You can mm, concatenate, but just uh, you can just use the plus in this case. Uh, you can split is the opposite of join. So if you have a, a string with A, B, and C, and then you split it according to the comma separator, what you get is an array. So in join, you take the array and you join the elements into a one string with a separator. In split, you are cutting the string in, uh, uh, into an array of strings uh, separated uh, by a given character. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are the two opposite uh, versions. Substrings are called slices, like in array. Uh, there is no splice method here because splice would, in, you remember, in array, splice would change the array inside and changing strings is not allowed. So no method for changing the string exists. Um, uh, substrings are just a, a special case of slices that already started at the left. We have all the regular expressions, uh, so the search and the match uh, and match all and so with regular expressions. So if you want to get mad with regular expression, you have all of that. Um, and Okay, now nothing. Uh, okay, repeating many times. Trimming is quite useful. So you are removing uh, spaces from the left and the right uh, um, uh, parts of the characters of the string. Mm -hmm. So nothing uh, uh, very special, very not very complex. Uh, one particular case. <clears throat> Sorry, professor. Yeah. Do you hear me? I have my chat disabled. Is it a problem for for all the students, or it is just for me? What do you have disabled? Sorry. The chat, the, my chat is disabled. Yeah, it's normal because we are using Slack for chatting. 
Okay. So, uh, so that we, we can keep all the messages in the, even after the end. Okay. So it's disabled for everybody because we, we are using uh, Slack uh, as the chat method. So if you go to Slack uh, in the live lecture, you can write uh, and... Uh, okay, 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 thank you. Sorry. No problem. Uh, so a uh, particular uh, type of strings are uh, so-called templates, uh, where there are strings that are delimited by back ticks, reverse quotes, reverse single quotes. And uh, the, uh, they have two particular uh, superpowers. Uh, one is that they can go over multiple lines. So you can open a back tick and write a string and go uh, over many lines until you close it. So if you have a very, a very long string, uh, it's, a, it's a good way to do that instead of just having fragments and concatenating them. And the other is that they can interpolate expression. So inside that, a template, you can use this uh, dollar embrace syntax and have any expression, a variable or a computation, and it will just replace that value, uh, so that, uh, that uh, expression with the value of the expression converted to string, of, of course. So it's a quick way of, for example, writing messages when you want to write a message and then the value of some uh, a variable so you don't have to concatenate all of them and build the string. It's a way of building the string by inserting values inside. It's quite uh, uh, useful when you're doing input output or constructing output. Uh, okay, so this is about uh, strings. Um, if we go really want to go to uh, more complex stuff. Um, strings and arrays are just a type of objects, basically, in JavaScript. And so uh, we can start having a look. Uh, the same method of string, uh, Alfredo can be used in template literals. Yes, they can use. When you are evaluating a template literal, it will get converted to the string with interpolated variables. So at that point, it will be just a string. It's a different syntax for creating strings. It's not a different type of object, OK? So you create a string by a sort of a implicit concatenation. But then it's a string, right? OK, so let's try to see in more in general how objects look like in JavaScript. So first of all, um, forget uh, everything you know about Java objects. Hmm? Everything you know about Java objects will be at the reverse here in JavaScript. Hmm? Will be exactly the contrary. Um, JavaScript is uh, really an object-oriented language because everything uh, relates around the object. For example, Java is not really an object-oriented language. I would call it more a class-oriented uh, languages, where everything is a class. Then you can create instances and you have your object. But uh, the real logic is inside the class. The typing is inside the classes and so on. Okay, JavaScript uh, doesn't have classes. Well, yes, we will see the JavaScript classes, but they are just, you know, syntax sugar around functions. We'll, we'll learn that. There's a very specific, uh, um, you know, um, semantic model around the JavaScript objects. First of all, uh, objects may exist uh, without classes. So you create an object. You don't need to create a class and then instantiate an object for that. You can create an, an object everywhere. Hmm? You don't have to derive. And so you have also no notion of type of an object being type of a class. There's no such thing. An object is just an object and it's identified by its properties. Hmm. Objects in JavaScript are dynamic. The properties of an object can change any time. So I can have uh, maybe a point object uh, with some properties, uh, for example, the x uh, uh, equal to 0 and the y equal to 1. And it looks like a, a, an object with two uh, properties. But 
uh, immediately after I could uh, okay remember that uh, I also want a Z uh, coordinate and so I can add a new property Z. So the list of uh, at this point the object will be, will have three property three properties X Y and Z, and uh, uh, this list can increase or decrease. You can modify the properties of an object whenever you want. Of course. Uh, the language lets, will let you do that, but we should be careful, of course, not uh, um, or we should we should always be aware of which properties we are putting inside the, every object. Okay, it's a, we have not a class definition that will tell us, okay, this object will have this property. No, it's up to us, as up to the programmer, to really keep track okay, of what I'm representing with that uh, with the object. Uh, the same goes for methods. You can add or remove a method to an object, so a function to be called on the object itself, uh, whenever you want. Basically, when we well, we will see that methods really don't exist; are just uh, properties that happen to be functions. So methods and, and the properties are actually the same thing, and you can redefine them. And the strange thing is that. Uh, uh, I could also take a, a, a predefined object, uh, I don't know, string, and add the method to that, or change the way the concat method is working, for example. Very dangerous. Uh, but the fact that every object, uh, you are, we are not modifying the string uh, uh, class in the, in the library, but we are modifying a single object of type string, giving different uh, uh, properties to that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that, okay? Because otherwise we will get crazy in the back. But you're, we are really once an object is created, is real. The properties can be really changed. Also, because there is no access control, there is no private, public, uh, protected, or whatever. Every property of every object is public, so you can change its value. You can delete the property. You can add a new property. You can rename it. Whatever. Everybody. So. Uh, it's a matter of uh, um, behaving well, behaving well uh, uh, in the JavaScript world. So you, I don't touch your objects, you don't touch mine, please. Uh, but there is no protection on the language uh, that will really, really uh, forbid me for, uh, from uh, modifying an object which is not mine. Hmm? Um, uh, okay, so uh, also to answer the questions, uh, um, uh the question by Jeff and carlo uh the the mental model that we have the semantic of the object is just uh, uh like this an object is a collection of names and values okay so like an associative array for example like a map right? as a small map we can also use objects like uh, like maps okay um so uh point is an object that has two properties x and y you can add and remove property. We have a, a very easy syntax for creating objects. So with the braces, we have a list, we have a comma, with the uh, properties, and each property has a name and a value, another name and another value. Okay, uh, it's the same syntax that you find in Python, for example. Um, and X and Y will create the properties and then we'll initialize them with the values that you provide. Okay. Um, you don't need to create uh, properties separately from the values. Hmm? There's no notion, oh, I'm creating a property, but it's null until I call the constructor. Nothing of that. I'm creating a property when I need it. And I create it and assign it a value. I don't need to create empty properties or something like that. Uh, in many cases, the names uh, um, of the properties, okay, are uh, valid identifiers like this. But we can also use more general names, and we see the syntax for those. Of course, you need to put the quotes uh, if you are using uh, uh, strange names as the keys. Okay, we can use them. A property name, but uh, if you think of an object as a key, uh, sorry, as a map, uh, you can also call it a key. No? The keys uh, inside of an object are the names of its properties, mm -hmm. because you are actually mapping uh, 
the key x into the value two and the key y into the value five. Um, every single Carlos say is saying that every single object has its own property. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see a bit about our, our complex mechanisms called prototypes where the property of, of an object can be propagated to another, but it's for, a, for, a, uh, for the future. Um, and the other sentence by Carlo is that if we modify the concat in the string A, the concat in the string B, when we change it, it's not so easy, no? the, um, the, the answer, because we, we can do both. We can modify the property on the local object or can modify it on the prototype of the object. We'll come to that when we discuss prototypes, but you can actually do both. Uh, in this, in, because in this case, string is a space, is a, is a, um, uh, an explicit constructor okay so the objects keep track from where they will get constructed but don't let me go into this today because we are just starting there um, they look like python dictionaries a lot yes uh, okay what i was saying if your name is uh, uh, cannot be mapped to an identifier so it doesn't have the right syntax uh, you can also always put uh, quotes uh, if your name contains special characters or a space for example you can quote it okay um, uh, Milad is, sim is similar to JSON. JSON is stricter as a syntax. Uh, for example, in JSON, the quotes uh, must always be present. So this would not be a valid JSON because you don't have quotes uh, around the names, right? And uh, uh, the other thing is that in JSON, you are not allowed to use single quotes, uh, but only double quotes. Uh, and uh, in JavaScript, uh, you can also have a, a, a dangling comma at the end if you have a long list of properties you can also have a comma at the end of the last one which will be will be ignored of course but uh, it makes it easy for you to uh, to add and remove lines okay because you, every line ends with a comma uh, in json that would be a syntax error so json actually is a java script object notation so it's a notation which is a simplified syntax uh, taken or copied from the definition of javascript objects json came later okay um is it possible to do a function to assign a value yes but we first uh, uh, needs to um uh, to see functions okay so later today uh, i will be able to answer to marco hmm? Okay, uh, object properties also. Okay, we, we decided that or with the we saw that we have a, a key value mapping in, in objects. Uh, what can keys be and what can values be? Keys are always uh, uh, strings or converted to strings. Already we know that. And of course, they must be unique, otherwise, they aren't, they are, they aren't keys uh, and can be created, added, or deleted uh, in any time. For creating a property we do that when we, when we initialize the object and uh, if you want to add a new property we just assign it not like we did with the z before we just assign it and then the property will be created immediately if you want to delete a property there's a specific operator called delete okay in this case i would write delete point dot x i don't remember if i need a, a parenthesis around that but probably not because it's an, it's an operator, not a function. On the other hand, the values of, a, of, a, of an object may be anything, everything. Uh, maybe uh, numbers, maybe strings, maybe arrays, maybe other objects, uh, whatever you want. Okay, because actually it's just your, you have the object, okay, with the different keys, key one, key two, key three. And each value is just a reference to another JavaScript object somewhere that may have its complexity. Maybe it's just a tree, or by me, it's just another object that points to an array that points to whatever. Okay. There's no limit to the complexity of the values of, of an object. Of course, the only rules about are about the keys that must be unique strings, basically, or something that it will be converted to unique strings. Um, and one particular case of, uh, uh, of values for a property is a, a property of type function. So functions are objects in JavaScript 
and uh, uh, so it can be assigned to any variable and in particular can also be assigned to a property of an object so we may have properties of type function if we if you want we are friends we may call them methods like in java for example like in python but there's no really such thing as a method in javascript it's just a property of value function we'll see how to create uh, objects of type functions later today um okay for accessing the elements uh, of an object uh, normally the syntax we have is just with the dot so object dot property name in reading and in writing we don't have any get or set method for accessing property properties are always public so just use them you don't need to pass through a getter or through a setter or whatever okay so at this point you either start hating java or start hating javascript depends on what you're are uh, sitting in, in this preference of handling these properties. Hmm? It's much more uh, you know, free here, everything. Or you can also access uh, a property by sort of indexing with the square brackets, hmm? like, like in Python, for example. And in this case, you must provide a string, okay, a quoted string. We have the quotes here, a constant string because it allows us also to use variables in, in this case so if i have a book of uh, p or whatever then a property name p doesn't have the quotes it's a variable so p will be converted to a string and we will look for a property with the string value inside the object book so we can dynamically uh, select property names uh, using variables of expressions of type string. So the square brackets syntax is longer to type. Uh, usually we don't do that uh, in, a, in simple properties because the, the dot notation is faster, but we can use it when we are using computed property names. Or the other case when the property itself is not a valid identifier, for example, this one contains a space. So the only way is uh, for accessing that uh, is using the, the string notation, uh, the string indexing notation. Um, we, uh, yes. Um, in this case, this notation here uh, looks like uh, associative arrays, say, mm -hmm. or dictionaries, because you are mapping one string of any type into uh, um, any, of any, uh, yes, only any string into a value. Mm -hmm. So, we can think them as objects like items or like uh, you know uh, basic values in object-oriented programming, or you can use the, just use them as a data structure for storing our value with the keys that would be arbitrary, okay, uh, not necessarily known to the programmer. Uh, Alessandro is asking if we may have objects inside objects. Yes, of course. The property of an object can be anything. In this case, the property chapter pages is. Uh, where is that? Where is my pen? Um, the property in this case is an array, but it may also be uh, an object. There's no limit to that. Uh, Anna, is the same to use single double ticks? Uh, yes, it's the same because uh, what's important is that you have a, a string. So first you build the string how you want with a single quote, with a double quote, with a back quote, or with a variable whose value is a string, and then the string is used to index uh, the, the object. Uh, person and name both contain the same string, uh, Carlo. So let me understand what you are asking. Person name, but okay, here. Because what did they do? Uh, person. E, okay. Uh, yes, in this case, book.author, okay, is uh, this string. And I'm I'm extracting and saving two different variables uh, the reference to the string. So actually, the the visual the, the inspector here shows the string, but in reality, what we have, we will have here is this. So sorry. Go away. Keep. 
actually what happens is that the string Enrico in this case is an independent object and so the author will point to this object and person will also point to this object and name also okay so all of three share the same uh, the same value actually um, with strings uh, is not so important uh, to make the distinction between aliases or copies because strings are immutable so there's no confusion it, nobody can uh, modify this uh, uh, Enrico and making it Enrico the eighth for example cannot be modified so whether it's a copy or it's a reference to the same value I will never be able to uh, to, take the, to, to tell the difference okay if uh, in in other cases it will be more explicit like you see what happens here with an array the property chapter pages links to an array but this array has a life of its own outside the object and if I use this value i will get i will be getting a reference to the array itself and not a copy um, okay so other questions uh, is this assigning by value or pointer vincenzo we are always assigning by reference okay or pointer if you like to call it there is no explicit copy of values except for primitive objects uh, or for numbers basically because even strings are shared and we are sharing the, the, the references. Um, Giuseppe is asking if there is an explicit dictionary type or we use objects. We may use objects, but there's also a map type in the standard library, which is more powerful uh, if you want. Uh, so no, very often we are just using objects, but if you want, you can explore the map uh, um, type in the, in the standard library. Uh, and then uh, Marco, can we define object attributes with spaces in the names? Yes, we can, but we are forced to use uh, the uh, the quoting uh, syntax, uh, like e both in defining them and uh, in accessing them. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Yes, the two syntaxes are totally equivalent. There are different ways of uh, writing the same thing. Uh, chapter pages uh, uh, is inside the quotes. Yes, Luca, because it's it, it's not a valid identifier in uh, in JavaScript because it contains a space. You, you may have a space. You may have um, I don't know a question mark or whatever. If you if your the name of your property is not a valid variable name, is not a valid identifier. You need to quote it. Hmm? Um, okay. So, but it's just uh, syntax. Usually, we'll try to avoid uh, uh, property names which are not identifiers just to avoid having more and more syntax mm -hmm. uh, and okay this uh, also clarifies that uh, these two are totally equivalent uh, but if you have a space inside uh, there is no other option with the quote with the with the dot uh, you must use the the explicit notation and uh, and of course uh, like we were discussing before this uh, square bracket syntax uh, looks like and allows us to to use uh, uh, object as a sort of associative arrays uh, um, with the arbitrary property names uh, and not just in the properties that we know okay uh, uh, if we want to make it more complex there's also one far syntax uh, uh, where you when you define uh, an object you maybe don't know the name of the property you want to set because this name is inside the um, inside the variable okay uh, so how can we create it's not very common but uh, if i want to create an object uh, maybe i have a, a variable uh, i don't know country equal to italy for example and I want to create an object where I have Italy, uh, I don't know, three, I don't know, whatever is the, the score of the of the Olympic Games or whatever. So I want to create an object where the name of a property is coming from a variable C. I cannot write, uh, of course, C eta, uh, C3, for, sorry, because then it will it would create a property called C. And so I will use a square bracket. Uh, but saying, OK, the property whose name is stored in the variable C. 
and we can assign it uh, to an object A. Hmm? Uh, it's a strange syntax, it's just the reverse of the quotes, basically. Uh, we could also do maybe it's easier to write this. Okay, is the same. Uh, the difference is that uh, in this case we are creating an object, and in this case we are adding a property to an object that we already created. So we must first create the object maybe with no properties, and then add this one. It depends on the. Uh, it's a strange thing. So uh, we will use it when we are creating objects on the fly uh, with the parametric values uh, uh, later on when we need to do that. Uh, and uh, okay, okay, you can also do fancy things like computing the names of the property, but well, you know, it's uh, even if you have a, a gun, you don't need to 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 um, uh, to use it to to hurt yourself. So be very careful. Okay. Uh, okay, and this on the right uh, is something that you already saw. So there are many variations of the syntax, but the key uh, concept is just very simple: key values. Uh, and the list of keys can be dynamically modified. Uh, can you use function to calculate the key inside the square brackets? Uh, Salam, yes, this is what uh, uh, this is saying. Any expression, including functions that compute that, uh, but of, co of course we must be careful, okay, because uh, it would be much more difficult to debug also. Hmm? Okay. Um, what happens uh, if uh, I can create a property anytime? a dot z equal to three but what happens uh, let uh, what no sorry i don't need the let because a is already created uh, what happens if i try to access a dot w uh, maybe for printing it or for computing something plus three is equal to k hmm? uh, i'm trying to access a property and this property might not exist i don't know the property w, w does it exist or not if it doesn't exist uh, there are, there is no runtime error so the program will continue but the value here of this uh, uh, operation will be undefined so undefined is a value inside the language it's not an error it's not an exception and so you, you will get this value undefined in your code so if you, you can check uh if you, you can check uh, if uh, uh, the value is defined or not and you can continue for example uh, remember that undefined is one of the six values which is false in javascript and so uh, you can see if uh, the book is defined if the author of the book is defined then you can extract uh, the uh, author and in this case uh, we know that book.author is not undefined because this is if uh, just already checked it okay so you may access the property only uh, or you can check whether a property exists uh, before so in this case we could we could say if uh, in our example if a.w is uh, uh, undefined or more uh typically if a dot w because undefined would be false anything else or nearly anything else would be uh true so we know that the property is there so it's common to have this sort of uh, checks and we can short circuit these checks with the boolean operator okay so in this case if this is false the rest will not be evaluated is this if this is true we are evaluating this and if this is true then we are evaluating this and this will be the value returned by the concatenation of the boolean operators okay so the strange combination of boolean operators and undefined values that create this sort of strange syntaxes that we are using um hossein if we define variables without letter var um it's forbidden in strict mode okay in uh, the older version of javascript uh, you would create global variables but now uh, you will get an error if you are using that in strict mode as we will also always be programming uh, whenever you use a module or whatever you are automatically in strict mode uh, that is forbidden it will get you will get a, a declaration error 
it's not possible anymore to create these global variables by forgetting to put let or var in front of it um okay so if you have an object and we knew that the the, the list of properties of an object uh, is something that we are you know defining x y z uh, maybe w i don't know whatever with spaces inside how can we you know uh, access the elements uh, of an object where we are not sure about which properties do they have and that is the reason why we have this in variation of the for loop when you give an object you can iterate over the properties of the object itself so for example this book has three properties author pages and chapter pages and if you iterate uh, in the object uh, at every uh, iteration you get the name of the property author pages and chapter pages as a string and so you can access so you can then name the property and you can use it to access the object to get the value uh, of each uh, uh, property uh, one at a time okay um, we we don't use it very often um, because usually we know which properties uh, our objects have uh, but uh, can be sometimes uh, we need it um, i mention it because uh, i always confuse the in with the uh, of construct uh, because uh, uh, which is used for arrays okay remember never use in with an array or never use of with an object you will get strange results basically um okay uh, a couple of questions uh, if we assign and define to a surname it checks whether they define or oh, alfredo about the slide before this is just the default value hmm? this would be the default uh, which uh, i will be overwriting if the property is there okay uh, the same is uh, just uh, you know, shortened in the in the expression below uh, at the end surname will get the value undefined or the real value if and only if the real value is defined and this is the same that we are doing with the chain of ifs uh, to, to check and to extract the value only if we are sure that is defined okay uh, most most often we, we will see syntax like this hmm? because people get used to the syntax and don't think uh, uh, every time about uh, the ifs and and the undefines and so on um is it possible to iterate gabing uh, or gabing i don't sorry i don't know your pronunciation um to iterate the value inside uh, instead of the key uh, no no because uh, uh, values cannot be necessarily unique cannot be necessarily identifiable or hashable uh, so you cannot iterate by by values but always by keys hmm? um you can enumerate the keys and take the values put them into a list uh, sorry into an array and then iterate the array of course uh, but you need first to extract the elements uh, by by key uh salem is asking to explain the console this line here uh we are just using a template string okay you see that this string is using back quotes so single quotes or single reverse quotes and in this case it's a, uh, like i mentioned before uh, in this lecture um, a template literal template means that uh, we are uh, using this uh, dollar brace syntax to interpolate to insert to inject the name uh, the value of an expression inside the string so if we don't want to do that is like we did uh, uh, prop plus uh, uh space equal space plus book prop is the same we are i'm building a string <coughs> sorry by concatenating different pieces of strings uh, for doing that easier we can i can have a template string like this with the back quotes and insert in appropriate in the specific places the value of some expression and this expression is here 
this is the first expression the value of prop which is a string and the second expression is the value of book dot prop basically hmm? console.log is just a print hmm? the common console.log is just for printing a value there's no print line um what will print when we try to print an object don't ask me ask javascript uh, for example i know i have an object uh, I, for example point is equal to x zero y three and you are console.log Log of point. It's writing the syntax uh, similar to that uh, that should be used for constructing the object. So if you're trying to log or print an object, it will list the properties of the object itself. Hmm? Okay. Uh, so iterating also for better um, responding to uh, who was that uh, you wanted to iterate over the values so to gabing um, you can extract the different uh, uh, elements of an object as arrays for example you can have uh, um, extract the, all the keys into an array all the keys into an array so we have objects object of keys of point and we get the array with all the name of the properties these are the same names that we, we, we could iterate over so all the properties that are currently defined for these objects or we can have the entries which is an array of arrays where we have for every element the, the name and the value of the property so for example entries is giving me saying okay this object has two properties the first one has name x and value zero and the second has name y and value three so it's not really iterating over the values uh, you are iterating over the entries which are indexed by, by by key so you cannot get rid of the key in any case okay but you can once you have this you can do what you want mario is asking uh, why did we use const in this uh, for loop uh, you're saying okay but prop uh, you, what you are, I, I think you're saying is a uh, prop is a variable that is changing so why is it declared as const hmm? well because const uh, um, the, the the for statement is already inside the scope of the for statement so in the same iteration the variable uh, prop doesn't change in the next iteration it will be a new variable so in that case if you are uh, okay even here it could have been const okay in this uh, uh, a but it's a it's a fine point of course but uh, uh, at every iteration you are redefining a new variable and so the const or it's a constant or not according to whether you are changing it inside the single iteration it's normal of course it will change at the next iteration but it's a different variable altogether right uh, and so usually many you know code checkers will tell you you can use const there because you are not modifying the value okay um, okay making a copy of objects is uh, again if you just do a, an equal copy you are copying the reference if you want to make a real copy of the object you may you must use some more complex uh, uh, construct using this uh, function called object assign object assign is a strange function because it will take one existing object existing and will add to this existing object the properties from the second parameter from the second object and if the first one is the empty object with no properties of course what we get is a, a, a new object with, with the same properties as before 
um, object of values. Uh, I, I sorry, I may, maybe it, uh, is there. I didn't uh, I didn't know it was uh, available. Hmm? Okay, if if you have the object of those values, uh, uh, you can use it. Um, so we were using assign, assign is used usually to copy an object but the general uh, syntax has a target object and a source object so the target object could also have some properties maybe a uh, and b the source object may have other properties like b and c for example what it will create is a new object with properties a b and c with a taken from the first one and b and c taken from the second one so on the second one, if I have a, prop, a new property, it will overwrite it, uh, will create a new property. If there is already a property with the same name here, it will be overwritten by the source object. So it's a way of merging properties from two different objects. I have two objects, I want to merge the properties of both into a new pro uh, object. If you have you, if you're using objects as dictionaries or associative arrays, this will also join uh, like a join operation of two maps. Uh, or otherwise, you can just transfer the properties of some object to some other object. Hmm? Um, again, it's just a shallow copy because if some of the values are by themselves references to objects or or arrays, of course, uh, uh, you are uh, not. Uh, copying uh, you're not making a copy of the reference but just uh, uh, the target object is modified uh, i don't remember yes it should be probably modified uh, let, let's try it uh, so we have this point uh, and we want to add uh, the z, z property so object object that assign to point a new property z equal to five six for example okay so it's of course returning the new object with a new uh, values and point is modified yes it both modifies the object and returns the new object uh, if you have two objects with the same property at the end it will be a copy because the source of the right target uh, yes if the properties of this left object are a subset of the property of the second, then what you get is a copy of the second. A subset would be, in your case, all the properties are the same, or in my case, all uh, I don't have any property to start with. And uh, what, I, what I get at the end is the, the second object. Hmm? <clears throat> the first object only survives, or parts of the second, or the first object only survives if there are some properties that are not in the second one okay um, if i'm not wrong okay you can use it you can it's also more complex because you can also give some default values so you can have a first object a second object and some defaults taken from a third object and so on um, uh, Martina, what would happen to Y? It will be uh, updated. Okay, so you are overwriting in any case. So the the second object always wins. Okay. Uh, that I don't know if okay. Yes, there is uh, also a, a shorter version of, of all of this uh, again with our friend the spread operator, the three dots, uh, where we can do the same uh, uh, as we did in uh, in. Um, in, uh, in, in a race, we are spreading the properties of an object and use them to create a, a new object. So for example, if we, what is that? Okay, if we have this point, uh, we can create a new point, a uh, uh, new let, new point, by adding the fourth dimension, for example. So we can use all the value of point, and add a, a, a four dimension. Uh, what, what am I forgetting? Oh, 
oh sorry it's a colon it's not an equal okay so new point you see that it contains one more uh, property there so uh you, you you get the same that you had with assign you get the properties of before and then you add more okay and it's also a way of making a copy let point copy equal to a new object that copies of the properties of point sorry Sorry for, uh, for, the, for the slipping, but this is the, the um, I already declared it. But instead of object.assign, it's much shorter to use this syntax. Okay, you create a new object in which you just spread all the properties that were in the initial object. So it's much uh, quicker. It, it requires a, a recent version of JavaScript, but today it's supported everywhere. So there are a few extensions to the um, ES6 uh, level of the language that I declared uh, at the first uh, uh, the first class uh, because they are so useful. So the spread operator will be used a lot. So we don't have to remember all the strange behavior of the object.assign or array.from or whatever. Okay, so from the syntax point of view, it's much, much leaner. Of course, when you read some code, it will be more cryptic at the beginning. Okay? And if you think of what the operator is doing in expanding or in destructuring, because you can also use it for destructuring an object. If you think about it, it's complex at the beginning, but then you start using the syntax quite you know, naturally. And it's easier than calling the the, the official functions. Um, okay, another asymmetry of the language is that you can check whether a property is in an, is inside an object. If a, an object does it have a property, for example, author or not? For using that, use the operator in. Do not confuse with for in, which is totally different stuff. So you can try it or you can just try to access the property and see whether the result is undefined or not. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so another a detail. Okay, in this case, this uh, object book doesn't have or does have the property author, so the the response will be true. But if I delete this property, then the check will be false later. Mm -hmm. It's not very used. Okay, so uh, creating an object uh, may be done in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I create it by initializing it. I create an empty object and then I will add properties to it later on. Uh, I can also create a new object with this syntax, new object, but it's totally equivalent to that. So there's no reason of, of typing more. Uh, or even this object that create is just a, a, a equivalent for that. So basically, these uh, syntaxes are allowed, but we don't use them. Or there is another uh, option. What, what happens if I always want to create an object with some properties, uh, which are more or less always the same, and they want to be sure that they are there, then they have some sane values, default values, and so on. We could use the, a constructor function. So a function for constructing of ob new objects. You can remember from Java that you have a class and that every class is a constructor, okay? Uh, we, are, we don't need classes, but we may have a function that plays the role of a constructor of objects. Uh, we see that, uh, uh, of course, in the chapter of functions, okay? Um, where it's a special, uh, a special way of, uh, of creating a function. Okay, um, objects are quite uh, mm, simple. They don't have many surprises until you combine them with functions and with scopes. So the real complexity, you remember the triangle, uh, arrays, objects, and functions. Now we are putting the, the, dynamite, the dynamite into the, the, the third element is the one that will make everything explode. 
So uh, let me start with a short introduction of the, uh, of the basic points about functions, and then we can have a, um, a break so that we, we can start entering the more complex stuff when we are a bit more uh, relaxed. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, functions are what make JavaScript JavaScript basically. So the, the way they are defined uh, are, are shaping the language more than all the other elements. Uh, you know already what is a function, something that has a name and returns a value and uh, can accept some parameters. Hmm? Of course, these parameters and these values can be numbers, strings, uh, objects, arrays, whatever. So actually there's no limitation of returning only one value when you can return an array with 17 values or an object with 17 properties that you are just building on the fly there in the return statement. Hmm? Uh, uh, okay. And functions are objects. Okay. Functions are objects from all points of view. So they can, their value can then can be transferred can be used can be stored can be computed can be passed as an argument to other functions and so on it's very very normal to have a variable that contains a function well of course uh, i can have let a equal to function and then we will see the, the syntax and it means that we have a variable called a that contains a reference to a function somewhere and this reference can be copied to b to another value to another variable can be used as a property of an object so an object can have a property x that points to this function and so on and can call a function with another function as a parameter because it's just a value it's just an object Okay, an object with a particular case that I can call the object a square uh, round brackets uh, calls the function, or I can call the function with some parameter. Uh, it Maybe it's also b. Okay, b calls the same function. Uh, or if this is an object uh, c, I can use c dot x. Uh, which is the reference of the function and then parenthesis to call it is the same function that may be called in different ways because the value can be transferred uh, easily like the value of any other object. Uh, what makes things so interesting or complex is that there are different ways of defining a function. There is the classical way. Uh, which is used very, very seldom, basically. Function with a function keyword, name of the function, parameters. Uh, the name is just an identifier, parameters are just names uh, of the um, positional parameters of the function. In, we, in this case, we are defining a function called do. Okay. Um, and this is the classical one. You can do that, you know, you can do that in C, for example. Uh, you use function, you know, for example, in C, you would have the, the return type here. You would write int square. Here, we don't have types, type variables, so you just declare it as a function. Uh, and, it, and it behaves normally. It's okay, you can pass some parameter, and uh, parameter passing is always by reference. So you are getting a reference to the object here. And uh, then you can use the value of the object and return a new one. Okay, so you are creating a new object Y here, and you're returning the reference to the object Y. All this reference uh, uh, is useless. Uh, uh, thinking about reference is, is useless if the object is a primitive one. It's a immutable one, like a number or a string. But it becomes important if the parameter is an object or an array, because uh, uh, references are different from values. Passing parameters is always by reference here. Um, 
so basically okay the, the book says that it's by value but what is the va the reference which is based by value hmm? so actually you get a reference to the real object <clears throat> Passing parameters is, uh, uh, is optional. So if you define a function with three parameters, A, B, and C, function F, and you, then you can call F with only one parameter, F3, uh, it's not a syntax error. Uh, the function will be called with A equal to three, and B and C will be equal to undefined. OK, so uh, it's a easy way of make, making function with a variable number of parameters uh, and there's also a way but we don't look into it uh, of creating function that will accept uh, a variable number of parameters and guess what we are using the spread operator for that hmm? but it's just a, a detail uh, what i wanted to show you um, be, before before uh, stopping for a moment uh, is that there's a second way uh, of creating a function uh, with a function expression uh, expression is something that will we can write anywhere in the code and we return a value so uh, we can write function anywhere and whatever we write from function up to the close embrace is just one expression that gives you a value this value, we can store it in a variable. And this variable will be used to call the function, function three. Because this variable, fn, contains a value that has been constructed by a function expression. This function expression will return an object of type function. And we are referring to these objects uh, through the function variable at the end is the same okay we have a, a function if we don't assign it with const it's just an object that we are creating then we, we store a reference to this object to call it later um, if we want, we can also have a name, give a name to this function, do. But for the basically for debugging purposes, because in this case, you cannot call it uh, by name. You must call it by the variable that uh, contains the reference to the object. So do is just, uh, in this case, a, a label uh, on the function itself. Uh, but it's not a variable that we can use uh, to call the function. The variable is only fn. So it may look, look like a, a small difference, but it will allow me to create functions everywhere. Uh, by the way, they are not so different because once I create a function like this, I could always say fn equal to 2. And I'm in creating a new variable fn that will point to the same function that was created before. They are just values. We are, I'm not calling the, the function. I'm just copying a, a, around the reference to that function that can be called later on. Uh, the second method uh, is uh, used very mo much often, much more often than the first one, uh, because then we can create functions everywhere inside another function we need a small function we created there we don't need to create a function at the global scope of the file and then save it into a variable and then remember where we saved we just we need it, we need a function only once we create it there when we need it we store it we call it we forget about it functions are very dynamic objects uh, in javascript um Okay, uh, let me answer to some questions. Uh, I have a long standing question by Giuseppe. Why are you declaring things stuff with const? Const or let are the same. Uh, it's just a protection. If I know that I will not modify the object, 
um, the reference to the object. Uh, I will use const so that the compiler will warn me if I try to modify it. Okay, so it's just a, um, a protection for the programmer uh, uh, that will prevent a reassignment of the same variable. So uh, there are some guidelines that will that tell uh, whenever possible use const and use let only if you really want to modify it. Hmm? But they are just guidelines, so it's the same. And also for answering to to Giuseppe later on. Here you can use const, you can use let, oh sorry, as you want, of course, the, the behavior is the same. The only difference is uh, whether I'm, I will be able later on to uh, modify the value of fn to point to something else. If I don't want that, uh, it's better to declare it as const. Um, Alfredo, uh, in the first case, if function returns tray, we can call fn3 fn3 and fn3 does something else it wasn't clear for me uh, uh, we will make some examples maybe it's better later uh, to how, how all of this works okay because in theory it seems clear but uh, or uh, um, yes i uh, i can be careful yes, sir. okay so uh, um I don't want to go too too far with the with this first hour. Okay, so the, all these questions uh, are are you know are, are important because uh, to they are needed to understand the difference and how we use these functions. So what I suggest is making a break now, and then we make an example by creating some function in the different ways, uh, and we see how they behave also the, with the parameters uh, and the, the different formats. Okay, so that we'll see in practice uh, what happens. Right. Um, and so I will keep all the questions for after maybe we do we do a small exercise with functions. Uh, but right now I think uh, it's better if we if we break because if we enter into this exercise it will take us another thirty minutes probably, and uh, we are uh, we are being a bit tired. Okay, so I will propose to stop for uh, fifteen minutes and start again at uh, ten twenty with an example and answering all the detailed questions that you're making me about uh, the, the function definitions. Okay, I will also try to make an example that I will try to answer to all, all of this. Okay, so I'm stopping it uh, right now and we start again at uh, 10.20 sharp.